WT Insider and WFSB partnered on an exclusive poll with Western New England University's Polling Institute. We looked at both the U.S. Senate race and the governor's race and who's ahead. Senator Blumenthal leads Lior Levy by 13 percentage points. Governor Lamont is ahead of Bob Stefanowski by 15 percentage points. But we also looked at the issues important to voters as they decide who to elect in the governor's race. race. Channel 3's chief political reporter Susan Raff and CT Insider's Dan Har are both here with insight into the results. So this, we talked last week about who's winning and why. This is now looking at some of the meaning behind it and what might have led people to make those choices. So let's get right to it. We have a big list of a whole bunch of different factors in the governor's race. You see all these numbers, inflation, cost of living economy at the top, taxes, abortion, morals, public education. Dan, what do you make of these numbers? Uh, well, the inflation, cost of living, economy, taxes, government spending, let's put it all together as pocketbook issues. And let's say that roughly half of, of voters in Connecticut see pocketbook issues as the key issue. Uh, they're agreeing with Bob Stefanowski that things aren't going well in the pocketbook issues, and yet they're not lining up behind him. That becomes the mystery in the, in the poll and in the election. Uh, in those numbers that you just showed, the, the the majority of those who pick those issues are Republican slash Stefanowski voters. Uh, the voters for Lamont tended to spread their choices out among what were the higher choice, their, their top priority. And Susan, it seems obvious in what the candidates are saying that they're trying uh, to both focus on the same things voters are focusing on. Right. Well, you heard Leslie Denardis just, to, you know, on the show talk about, you know, they're very concerned about the economy, and I think everyone uh, is. And if it wasn't for the economy, I think abortion would play up higher and be more of a concern for voters. But the economy, inflation, yes, pocketbook issues. So the mantra for a lot of the Republicans is focusing on the economy, the cost of living, and Democrats. We had the vice president uh, in Connecticut and talking about reproductive rights. Uh, there's a second slide of, of the, the important factors, and it shows some very small percentages. Here it is. Uh, and crime coming in only at 2%. It's one of a number of issues that tied at 2%. Some big talker issues that came in as very small. But people are talking about that, and, and it is an issue for, for some communities more so than others. But the data that just came out uh, earlier, uh, maybe two weeks ago, shows that crime overall is down. Governor Lamont was pretty uh, pleased about that when it comes to violent crime and property crime. The only only things uh, that went up slightly were murders and uh, and rape. Uh, and even then, if you look at it over a long period of time, it's not a very high increase. Two percent is not always just two percent. I would say crime is a bigger issue in this campaign because the Republicans are making it an issue and because of the 2020 police reform bill, which is so controversial. I would say that is a bigger issue than, for example, race and diversity, which is at also at two percent. So somebody can have a second choice. Remember, if you have ranked choice voting, crime would be way up there. Right? Because it's not, it's, it probably is the second most important issue, but Republicans picking those pocketbook issues have crime as a relatively high issue, but not number one. And Stefanowski recently had a press conference saying, you know, everybody's uh, concerned about crime. And we did see a spike during the pandemic. There were a lot of car break ins. I mean, Glastonbury, as we all saw on the news. Uh, but a lot of those numbers uh, have come down. But uh, you see, the, the, what, what this party can't seem to quite get is that anecdotes are not the same as data right and so yes we've got lots we in the news industry are either f credited with or guilty of covering crime a whole lot more than we did just a few years ago a whole lot more and there are reasons for that we won't go into here but that's having an effect on people's perception and Dan and I were talking about this earlier and that is you know cities like Hartford I think Hartford is going to see more homicides this year than they've seen in 20 years that's disappointing uh, but it is a city that has been plagued with uh, violent crime so it is an area where you would expect it, but crime overall is down, according to the numbers that just came out. So more important than 2%, but not the most important thing you said the no. pocketbook issues are. So let's take a look at another slide uh, talking about what people think about Connecticut's economy. Uh, we have a breakdown of that, and you can see 17% say over the past 12 months the economy is better, 52% say worse, 28% about the same. And we have that broken down uh, as well about personal financial situations. So not just the economy, but what are the finances like in your house? And it's a similar split. Not a lot of people saying better, many saying worse. 
So, Dan, what do you make of these numbers? Lots of numbers. Bottom line is that even Democrats who favor Lamont agree that the economy is not so good. By the way, the numbers say that Connecticut is doing better than the nation, despite that one report that came out a week ago Friday on the, the GDP being down. The GDP was way up in the first quarter. So let's say Connecticut is doing about the same as other states. That's what the facts say. That doesn't matter. People feel worse because of inflation. They feel worse everywhere in the nation. So yes, it is a big issue. Even Lamont voters say that, but they're still voting for Lamont. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, because we started this by saying that he has a big lead. So so what do you make of that? If they're saying it, but they're still voting for him, what do you make of it? It's the middle. I got my cheat sheet here. Among people who say that they're... <laughs> that, 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 my job is to tee them up. I you might know. be able to cite the numbers. Among people who say that their household finances are about the same, Lamont has 77%. Among people who say that the economy is about the same, Lamont has got to cheat 80%. And among people who say crime is about the same, Lamont has 71%. Stefanowski isn't winning the middle. Maybe it's the fact that while uh, many Democrats feel it's gotten worse, it, they don't blame Lamont necessarily for that. I think, you know, a lot of people, when gas went up and gas prices, that's a national trend. So maybe those voters don't see that as he's responsible for inflation. The whole country is experiencing inflation. So it may not be enough for them to say, well, I don't, I'm, I don't like, I'm so upset with inflation, I'm going to vote for the Republicans. Yeah, 25% of Lamont voters are negative on the economy. Those are the ones who don't blame Lamont. The others do, but it's not enough because the middle isn't there. we got about 30 seconds left. We talked about it when we first talked about this. Snapshot in time, snapshot in time. Do you see anything trending here as we get closer to Election Day? I'm not sure. I, I think that uh, Governor Lamont is in a good position going into uh, you know, November's election. We still have, I believe, one more debate. Uh, before that. The one thing that we're noticing a lot, though, this time around is that Bob Stefanowski is out and about campaigning. He did not do that uh, his first round. Now he's having events all the time. He is out there. So I'm not sure that's going to translate into a win for him. Plus, keep in mind, Rob Hodling is on the ballot, the independent candidate, uh, and he's probably going to siphon off votes from uh, Bob Stefanowski. Ten seconds left. You get the last word. Bob Stefanowski does have a path to victory. It's narrower and narrower, but he's on the bus looking for it, and he's out there. All right, and we'll keep covering it. Thank you both, Dan Har, Susan Rapp. Thank you for being with us. For the latest local, political, and business news, check out Dan's columns on ctinsider.com and in the Hearst newspapers. They're all listed right there on your screen.